Every newcomer wants to get his career started with a bang against an undefeated fighter willing to brawl his way to the top. This fight tonight is a, it's a huge opportunity. It's my debut in the WEC. You know, I've been wrestling since I was five years old. You know, I, I honestly believe that, you know, I was born to do this. So um, going in there and kicking this guy's butt is going to really feel good. It does piss me off quite a bit that he is getting as much exposure as he is. I want to finish him fast because I want to put myself on the map. I'm going to come out and whip his ass even worse than I did the last guy. I feel confident in the fact that I'm going to leave this arena undefeated. You know, Eric Coach is undefeated also, and you know, he doesn't know what it feels like to lose, so it's gonna be a tough fight, but I feel pretty confident I'm gonna be the victor. I'm bigger, I'm taller, I got more reach, and when he shoots in, or he throws an overhand right, it'll be a straight left, ready for him. Knock him out. This is the high energy of Eric Cope making his way inside Nationwide Arena here in Columbus, Ohio. Born and raised in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. This guy gets fired up just on the entrance alone. You can imagine what he does once he gets inside the cage. Yeah, look at this guy, his WC debut, and he is excited. Right now, training uh, out of Milwaukee at that Duke Rufus camp, a great camp. And uh, he looks fired up for this one. Eric Cope coming off a win over Jamil Masu. That happening back in December of 09. A lot of energy brings a lot of pace inside the cage. You heard him talk about his height advantage, his reach advantage. He thought that would be enough, but he will have his hands full tonight with Chad Mendez. All right, let's talk about Eric Cope coming out of Cedar Rapids. You talked about the camp and Duke Rufus. We know what kind of fighters he's able to train. Guys like Anthony Pettis, very flashy once they're inside the cage. Yeah, yeah, if this guy's anything like uh, Pettis, this is gonna be for an exciting fight. Um, yeah, expect some good kickboxing. I mean, Duke Rufus is a, a four-time uh, Muay Thai World Heavyweight Champion, so his gym was originally just a kickboxing gym, but of course he evolved just like the sport has, and his gym is now a complete MMA gym. He's got Eric Schaefer te teaching the jiu-jitsu, and um, Eric Koch, I was wrong, second fight in WEC, and uh, he's still fired up. I, I thought it was his debut, just the excitement he had when he walked out. He is relatively new to the WEC, only one fight in, and that again happened in December of last year. So at 21 years of age, Eric Koch steps into the WEC cage for only the second time in his career. And he's pretty tall for a 145 pounder, five foot nine. Uh, pretty good reach on him, and uh, he still looks pretty solid. Still looks muscular, powerful, and strong. Well, he goes by the nickname of Money. This is Chad Mendez. Born in Hanford, California, now fighting out of Sacramento. When you hear the word Sacramento and fighting out of, you think of Team Alpha Male, and you're exactly right. This young man, I, I don't want to scare anyone, but they say he's, he's Uriah oh, Faber yeah. 2.0. I've heard a lot of hype about this guy. I heard he is just magic in the gym, and uh, there's, a, there's a, a lot of people say he's like a 145-pound version of Cain Velasquez. So if you know anything about Cain Velasquez, he you can know fight. this good stuff. Chad Mendez, a two-time Pac-10 champion, NCAA All-American. He pretty much brings it all the time, but he is making his WEC debut tonight in Columbus. And I believe he got uh, second. He was runner-up in the NCAA tournament. So the just, one loss of his career that year was the one loss in the NCAA tournament. That just tells you how good of a wrestler this guy is, which may be the big difference in this fight. He comes in with a 5-0 record, undefeated, but again, making his WEC debut tonight here in Nation wide arena and there is the California kid behind him <laughs> 24 years of age Chad Mendes now making his way inside the WEC cage for the very first time As 
as we take a look at the tail of the tape. Chad Mendes, 24, 5, 6, 145, his reach 66 inches. Eric Koch, 21 years of age, 5'9", 144, and a 70-inch reach. Right now we go inside the cage. That is where Joe Martinez has the official fighter introductions. And out, fight fans, here we go. Three rounds between two undefeated featherweights inside the cage. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, he is a freestyle fighter. Standing five feet, nine inches tall, his official weight, 144 pounds. Professional record is perfect. Nine victories with no defeats. Fighting out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Here is the undefeated Eric Newbreed Next is opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. He is a wrestler standing five feet, six inches tall. Official weight, 145 pounds. Tonight, he makes his WEC debut, bringing with him a perfect professional record. Five victories and no defeats. Fighting out of Sacramento, California. Here is the undefeated Chad Money. Referee in charge of the action, Greg Franklin. Fighters at center. Gentlemen, you've already been getting your instructions. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves, come out fighting. So it's the debut of Chad Mendez taking on Eric Koch in the featherweight division of the WEC. This one is scheduled for three rounds. Fight, gentlemen. Oh, Coke with a really wide, kind of awkward. It looks like he's imitating Anderson Silva a little bit. Very confident in stand up ability, though. You talk about Chad Mendez at 145. I mean, he is a solid, compact 145. I know. I commented on Coke's physique for being a tall guy. He's pretty muscular. Then uh, Mendez comes in here, and, <laughs> and Coke all of a sudden looks a lot skinnier. Yeah, Mendez is just a little powerhouse. Chad Mendez in the white trunks with the green trim. The blue trunks and the red trim belong to that of Eric Koch. <laughs> the situation where both of these guys have strong wrestling backgrounds, but I have to think that if you're Eric Koch, <laughs> Maybe going to the map might not be the best thing with Chad Mendes. No, not at all. He's going to want to keep this fight standing. You know, with a wrestler like Mendes, yeah, you don't want to get taken down. And he's doing a good job. He's got that wide stance, but he's using his jab well. It looks like Mendes's nose may be a little bloody, and I believe that's from that stiff jab Coke landed earlier. Wow, look at the oh, speed. speed. I mean, Chad Mendes shot on him so fast. Wow, that was a fast, powerful <laughs> shot, and Cope was still able to defend it. Chad Cope goes to the sprawl, bounces off the side of the cage, stays on his feet. Yeah, how he was able to stay on his feet after that fast of a shot, how deep of a shot as well, it's beyond me. If that shot happens in the center of the cage, it's a different story. So these kickboxers from uh, Duke Rufus' school are, are really uh, impressive with their takedown this. Coke in the south paw stance, Mendez in the orthodox. You talk about the stance of Eric Coke. What do you think of that? I mean, is that just to be able to implement the attack that he wants coming from a kickbox back? Yeah, I think that's to be able to defend the takedown. And, and how he defend that last takedown, it, it looked like it's working. So, um, you know, it may look awkward, but uh, it may prove to be effective. He's not stopping that yeah, takedown. No. He changes levels on him so fast. Coke, not a good idea to try to uh, tie clinch a, a wrestler like Mendez. I mean, you, you know, you put both hands up on that neck and try to pull his head down, he's going to drop right into a double leg, which he did. Now Coke's trying to use that fence to get up, but Mendez keeps sucking him back. And this is where Chad Mendez is an absolute tactician, is a former All-American Division I wrestler. And it keeps pulling him back, keeps sucking those hips back. 
Look for uh, Mendez to try to call, pull him back and crawl over the legs of Koch, but Koch's back to his feet. Good job on standing up. So Eric Koch able to get back to his feet. Chad Mendez in the white trunks with the green trim. Eric Koch fighting out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa in the blue trunks. Uh, Koch's really impressing me. He defended that one deep shot, yeah. and then uh, he got taken down here. He avoided any damage and got back to his feet. Mendez's his corner calling for the takedown. You need that takedown. They know he doesn't want to stand with this guy. Oh, playing it smart. He, uh, he's got to be patient. Lands a nice left hand. He's setting that left hand up too. He's been uh, popping that jab. Oh, there's a hook. And again, Mendez with a powerful shot. And this is where he likes to live. Wow, he is strong. He drove him all the way across the ring and at the last moment lifted his feet off the ground, securing the takedown. Under a minute to go here in round number one. This one's scheduled for three in the featherweight division. Yeah, beautiful double leg there by Mendez, but let's see if he could uh, do any damage off that. Coco for that uh, rubber guard, mission one. Man. Good job. That's, that's a really effective way to, to keep a guy from posturing up and landing on strikes. As you can see, Mendez's head is now forced down towards the chest of right. Coke, and he can't hit him. Tries to plow through there. Now, if you're Mendez, it looks like he hops to, it looks like he was trying to hop the side controller, at least yeah. get a single in. Well, when the guy's got both uh, butterfly hooks on that, a good right. pass is to just jump, go vertical over the top, then turn your hips and get that side control. Tried it, but Coke was a little too slick to let him pass. When you've got a guy that translates, we go under 10 seconds to go here in round number one. It's interesting to see how his NCAA background translates here into MMA. And right now, Chad Mendez and Eric Koch in a great battle. Round number one over. We'll see round number two. He's got good distance here, right? Yeah. So you got to find creative ways to get in. Breathe, relax, number one, in your nose. All right, let's go back and look at the action from round number one. Great takedowns. We knew we'd see that from Chad Mendez. Yeah. Phenomenal wrestling ability. There it is, going for the tie clinch. Uh, big mistake against the wrestler, but Coke was able to get right back up after that takedown. And oh, good punches by Coke, but look at him drive Coke all the way across the ring and lift him up, securing that takedown. So some big takedowns there by Mendez, but um, Coke won the stand-up battle, that's for sure. It's gonna be interesting to see how the judges score that first round. There you see the corner of Chad Mendez, Uriah Faber, former featherweight champion in his corner, Master Tong, as part of the alpha male team. Ready? Ready? Let's go, gentlemen. So the chess match continues in round number two in the featherweight division. Eric Koch in the blue trunks. Chad Mendez in the white with the green trim. Nice. Uh, Mendez landed a little double right hand. That's a good weapon against the south bar. Again, if you're fighting in that open stance, the double up on your power hand, you kind of use it a little more like a jab. The first one didn't land, but that second punch did. Now Coke answers with some yep. big shots, and, and we're right down to the double leg is Mendez. And I guess that is probably the problem he's going to face all night, Eric Coke, when he comes with those great combinations. He's I don't know, closing the distance too fast because you know what Mendez's defense is going to be is going to shoot on us. Well, yeah, you leave yourself uh, a little open for a takedown when you're coming forward. In the first round, he, uh, he did a pretty good job of not getting too aggressive like that and trying to just land the jab and not go forward, but uh, he got a little too aggressive there and paid for it by getting taken down. Koch once again going to that rubber guard momentarily, trying to keep Chad Mendez from posturing up. Mendes does not seem, though, to be in the posture of no, it's like he wants no, he to go to, He's trying to just get to a mount. You know what? It's uh, Maybe it's because of his size. He's got uh, kind of short arms, so if he keeps his head down in Coach's chest and just tries to land those looping shots over the top and those little elbows from inside the guard there, uh, he could get away with it. But uh, again, I, I always believe you really want uh, to hurt a guy, land some big shots in the guard. You need, you need that posture. You need that velocity. Eric Koch right now trying to figure a way to rid himself of Chad Mendez, who is 
in a pretty aggressive stance, and this might be it, using that rubber guard to keep him down and then just continue to land the shots to the side of the head of it, Chad Mendes. Exactly, and also keeping your chest down on your opponent that close, it makes it very easy for him to go to that position, which uh, it's commonly referred to as mission one. So we hear, oh, we went to mission one, that's usually it, when you grab the shin uh, from your guard to help keep the, your opponent's posture down. He's got to watch that arm. Chad Mendes there, and he pulls it through. Yeah, a little too um, compact and strong for that. Under three minutes to go here in round number two. This one's scheduled for three in Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, really hard to land that Oma plot on a guy uh, with the build of uh, Chad Mendes. Half guard right now being implemented. Eric Koch trying to find a way to rid the thicker fighter of Chad Mendes from him. He's just, he's just pressing down on him. Yeah, not a lot of action. I mean, um, Chad just keeping down tight, just trying to hold him more than anything. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the referee stands it up so. The free Greg Franklin watching us very closely, telling them to keep working. He is trying to pass now. Now he's almost in a mount. Now, now it could pay off. But uh, look, Coke does a good job of putting that butterfly yeah. hook in. Now he could elevate the hips a little bit. Now he's back to a half guard. Mendes trying to pass, but just, just can't, can't get that leg free. Stuck in a bit of a half guard stalemate. He's got that left arm pinned down, though, momentarily of Eric Cope. Yeah, it's hard keeping that arm pinned from a half guard. From a side mount, that's a whole different story, you know? You could trap that arm and, uh, and land a lot of damage. A lot of times, you see a lot of opponents getting stopped from that. From a half guard, not too hard to get that arm out. A situation now where if you're Chad Mendes, do you try to get out of that single and go to side control? Oh yeah, he's trying really hard to pass the guard, but Coach just doing a good yeah. job of uh, you know you put the butterfly hook, lift the hips, go back to half guard, just keeping him inside, keeping him from passing. And and you know, now it's they've been on the ground about three minutes and there hasn't right. been much action. He's back to that mission one position because uh, Mendes keeps his head down. What a lot of folks at home don't understand is this is very tactical, very chess match-like bout right now because one mistake between two of these guys could end the fight. See, there's a couple good shots by Mendes. It's probably the best shots he's landed from inside the guard. Koch had the rubber guard going, which would have somewhat defended that by keeping the velocity of those punches at a shorter range. 45 seconds to go here in round number two. Another hard elbow from Mendez. Well, this is definitely where Chad Mendez would like to live, on, keeping guys, Eric Koch off his yeah, feet. This is his game right here. You know, Koch needs to get back to his feet. He might be looking for a stand up from the referee, but you just can't count on that. And gosh, is Mendez yeah. strong. Yeah, he is. You know, he has been keeping his head down, and uh, Koch's been going to that mission control by grabbing his shin, but that last time he, he just postured right up and actually. Uh, broke the grip of Coke, and that's a hard thing to do. 10 seconds to go here in round number two. And we will see a third and final round in this featherweight bout. You're gonna have to stay busy on the ground for me. He's been warned about staying busy on the ground. All right, as we go back and look at the action from round number two, Eric Koch had some nice combos to start things off, but when he got in so close, immediately Chad Mendez went to the takedown. Yeah, here he is coming in with punches. Mendez scores that takedown. That was uh, towards the beginning of the round, and uh, Koch was stuck on bottom that entire round. I mean, you just can't win a round from your back if, if you over. don't have uh, He locks that up, you throw your right hand over, over to the head. Yeah, you gotta pour it on. You're, you're like trying to warm up. When you walk out there, I want a lot of movement, hands up high, a lot of feints, a lot of movement to start off. Show them you're not tired. Let's go. Five minutes for the rest of your life. You win this round big. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Smart. Up, up. Let's go, Chad. Smart. So this is it, the third and final round in the featherweight division between Chad Mendez and Eric Koch. Two very talented fighters, Chad Mendez making his WEC debut, Eric Koch looking for his second victory in the WEC, coming off a victory over Jamil Massou. 
And this is basically a tale of which fighter is going to implement his will, Stefan Bonner, because if you're Eric Koch, you definitely want to keep this thing on its feet. If you're Chad Mendes, he'd love to get it back to the ground. Oh, yeah, Koch's kind of in a bad situation because he really needs to win this round, but uh, he, he can't be over aggressive and come forward too much, or else he's going to pay for it by uh, getting taken down by Mendes again. After the end of that last round, referee Greg Franklin informing both fighters, I need to see you working when you're on the ground. You have to stay busy. Oh, goes for the lateral drop. Didn't land it. Cope with a nice high kick to follow. Both of these fighters coming in on terrific camps. Eric Cope training with Greg Rufus, Duke Rufus, excuse me, and Chad Mendez working with the great Uriah Faber and the team at Alpha Male out of Sacramento. Oh, Mendez almost ducked into that high kick. Good thing he had his hands up. And there is a cut to the top right eye of high brow line of Chad Mendez. I thought that the high kick probably partially landed then. Another powerful takedown by Mendez. Yeah, and he's cut good. Yeah, it's over the right brow line of Chad Mendez. So, uh, Coke needs to keep his back on the cage. He, uh, when yeah. he got taken down the middle of the, the cage, he could not stand up. He spent the entire second round there. So he's doing the right thing. He's really trying to get his back on that cage, but Mendez keeps sucking him back, sucking him back. Well, this is a situation where referee Greg Franklin warned them after round number two that he would stand them up if they didn't stay busy. And right now, it looks like Chad Mendes is just holding on. Yeah, he is. He's just, he's cut, he's bleeding bad. He wants the victory. He knows if he's on top, he'll get it. Look at that, Coke. Oh, yep. Coke getting back to his feet, and they stop the action. Wow, they chucked the cut. They're going to stop it, and they're going to check the cut. Oh, that's in a bad spot. Oh, that's in a bad spot. Nasty cut and a bad spot from the legal strike. Let's see how it happens. Oh, Coke down yeah. low. Yeah, was. And, and it looked really. Yeah. And it looked really high on the shin bone too. It almost, it almost looked like a knee. Wow, let him continue. That's a nasty cut. Wow, that is a very nasty cut over the right eyebrow of Chad Mendes. So now it becomes a situation of time, and you've been in this situation before. If you're Chad Mendes, you got to get in there and end this thing quickly because they are going to be looking at fighter safety with his vision's impaired. They will have stop it. Ooh, that, that the kick went like it landed again. He needs a takedown bad. Almost had one here. Now the problem is that blood is going to work to Coke's favor. That blood's going to make it more slippery, more hard for Mendes to hold Coke down. And now Chad, Chad Mendes has to defend that right brow line oh. and get a takedown, and Coke is going right at him. He is. Same, same thing. It looks like uh, Mendes starting to weaken a little here. He's bleeding bad. He ate a couple hard high kicks, partially blocked, some good punches there. And Coke looks to be taking this fight over. Well, psychologically, as a fighter, you see that you've cut the guy, and he's bleeding. Where does that take oh, you? Look at that takedown. Big down. mistake. Big mistake by Cope from the under overs against a wrestler of that caliber. You don't want to throw that high knee. Uh, he's fighting a beautiful, beautiful fight. Uh, Coke is, but that I mean that was a mistake and that could cost him. Big. So now Chad Mendez has him on the ground where he wants it. He's got the side control, but what can he do with it? Well, it's an inadvertent poke to the eye. Unintentional. I'm gonna give a warning. And you heard it from referee Greg Franklin. He's saying it's an unintentional poke to the eye, so he will give him a warning. He's giving a warning. He's giving a yeah. warning. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Good to start. It looked like it might have been a little frustration poke there. I mean, Mendez obviously a little frustrated, covered in blood, Let's cut go, in a gentlemen. bad spot in a very close fight. So the clock has started again. Now we're at 1.20 to go in the third and final round. This has been a very entertaining bout between Chad Mendez in the white trunks with the green trim, taking on Eric Koch. Koch went for that high kick again, which has been his best weapon in this fight. But uh, Mendez got a little smart to it this time and just drove forward and got the takedown. 
And again, look at Mendez locking both hands behind Coke's back, just trying to keep him on the ground, just trying to keep him on the ground. He knows if Coke stands up with a cut that big, it's not good for him. Not good because his visibility will be a situation where the, they will have to deal with it. The referee is going to protect the fighter at all costs. And that was very smart of Mendez. That's exactly what he had to do. He picked him up and turned him away for the cage. And look at Coke. You could see him trying to get back on that cage. Because the cage is his best friend right now, using that to stand back up. It doesn't look like against a wrestler this Mendez's caliber he could stand up from the center of the cage. Well, this is the situation now where Eric Koch just has to hope the referee stands him up because Chad Mendez yeah. has got him locked up on the ground. Not much time left. And Mendez definitely just trying to stall it out here. Koch really trying to get back to the feet. Mendez the final 10 seconds of this, the third and final round. So will it be the ground game work of Chad Mendez or the striking of Eric Koch that will get the victory? It goes to the judge's decision. Yeah. And Takedowns to Mendez, of course, but damage to Coke. And uh, which which of those factors are the judges going to take into consideration more? All right, let's take a look at some of the action from round number three. And really, the big story here was the big snap kick to the right yeah. brow line right there of Chad Beautiful Mendez. Beautiful job of dropping his head, kind of faking the shot. And here it is again. This is another kick. I mean, that was his best weapon in the fight, that, that left high kick. And here's the knee. Oh, landed good, but he paid the. Oh, not that one. Yeah, this is the and Mendes here's takedown. where he went for it again, but Mendez ready for it this time. All right, guys. We now go inside the cage. That is where Joe Martinez has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, to three rounds we go to the scorecards. All three judges have it the same: 30 to 27. For your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, Chad Money Mendes. Chad, congratulations. First of all, the takedown's obviously a key tonight in this fight. Hey man, when you're going against someone as tough as coach, you know, you gotta stick with what you're really good at. And I would have liked to stay out here and bang for you guys a little more, but that guy's tough. He, he caught you with the big kick, opened up a nice gash. How were you feeling after that? Uh, you know, I wasn't feeling any different, but I definitely felt it open up and uh, just instantly felt the blood start rushing down. So, you know, that, that's always a, a, a bad thing to, to happen in the, late in the fight because they could stop it. So I'm lucky they didn't stop it, you know, got the W, so it was a good night. Congratulations in your WEC debut, Chad Mendez, your winner.